Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss this question which was asked in GATE 2020. Consider the following statements about process state transition for a system using preemptive scheduling. A running process can move to ready state. A ready process can move to running state. A block process can move to running state. A block process can move to ready state. Which of the following statements are true? So this is a multiple choice question. And the reference to this question can be found in this NPTEL lecture, lecture 12, week 3, Operating System Fundamentals, where Professor Sandhuru Chattopadha, IIT Kharagpur. To solve this question, we need to understand what are the straight transitions which happens in the product process in the operating system. So, let us see this. Uh, so, the first, the process is being created in the new state. Uh, then, the uh, process is taken to the ready state where more than one processes are present to be executed. Then a scheduler is uh, required to take the one of the process to pick up one of the process from the ready state to uh, for, uh, for its execution and then it is taken to the running state where it is being executed. Only one process can be present in the running state whereas more than one process can be present in the ready state. After completion of the execution, the process is taken to the termination stage where it terminates. Also, it may happen in that, that the process requires certain I.O. operations. Then, the process is taken from the running state to the I.O. state. It is also known as the block state. And after completion of the I.O. operations, the process is taken back again to the ready state. Now the ready state resides in the main memory and we all know that the capacity of the main memory is limited. So if there are more many processes present in the ready state then some of the processes can be taken back into a blocked ready state which normally resides in the secondary memory and there is a to and fro movement between the blocked ready state and the ready state depending upon the memory capacity of the system. Also, there is one more state which is known as the blocked I.O. state. So, this happens if there are uh, many processes present in the I.O. state, but there are not enough I.O. presence in the system. So, in that case, the uh, process can be taken into the blocked I.O. state. And again, there is a to and fro movement between the I.O. state and the blocked I.O. state depending upon the availability of the I.O.s. Also, the process can be taken back from blocked I.O. to the IOS, uh, blocked ready state. So, this diagram, transition diagram shows for the, is for the non-preemptive scheduling. Uh, now, the question requires asks for the preemptive scheduling. So, preemptive scheduling is normally used when for multitasking uh, purpose. Uh, so, so, it uh, in what happens in multi-scheduling is that the process which resides in the running state can also uh, come back to the ready state. So after come, uh, working, executing for a particular time quanta in the running state, say about 2 seconds or 3 seconds, it, it is taken back to the ready state. And again another process is taken from the ready state to the running state. So this, is, this diagram depicts the working of a preemptive schedule. In non-preemptive scheduling, there is no process flow between the running state and the ready state. Whereas in preemptive scheduling, the process can be taken from the running state again back to the ready state and vice versa. So, if you look into all the options, the correct option will be the option C based on the this transition diagram and the movement of the processes in the transition diagram. Thank you. Thank you.